It's one of the most spectacular sights on the planet, Niagara Falls. While not exceptionally high, they are very wide and powerful. More than six million cubic feet of water falls over the crest every minute, which besides providing inspiration to the romantically inclined, is also a great source of power to industry. While the falls are mostly associated with Canada, they in fact straddle the Canadian and United States borders. They are spread between the Canadian province of Ontario and the US state of New York. Niagara Falls is composed of two major sections, the Horseshoe Falls in Canada and the American Falls on the United States side. The smaller Bridal Veil Falls is also located on the American side. The Niagara Falls were formed when glaciers receded at the end of the last ice age, about 10,000 years ago, and water from the then newly carved Great Lakes bore a channel through what became the Niagara Escarpment. Besides delighting honeymooners for decades, the falls have been a source of hydroelectric power since the 1890s. Though the area had long been inhabited by Iroquois Indians, the first white records were written by French explorer Samuel de Champagne in 1604. Tourism became a popular pastime in the area as early as the 1700s. By mid-century, it was the main industry. Its romance didn't take long to capture the attention of the romantic. For most of the 20th century, Niagara Falls has been the ideal honeymoon location. But as with any remarkable natural phenomenon, there are some who look upon it as a challenge to be conquered. The foolhardy stuffed themselves into barrels and rolled themselves over the falls. The Yankee leaper, Sam Patch, tried his luck in 1829 and survived but not all of the 15 or so have been so lucky. This is Bobby Leach, who in 1911 got a closer view of the falls than most when he went over the crest in this iron barrel. Note the severe dent. One daredevil pilot, Lincoln Beachley, even flew under the Niagara Falls Bridge in 1911. The American steamboat, Caroline, had the misfortune to go over the falls in 1837, not by choice, of course. It had been caught supplying Canadian rebels and was set adrift by the English. Now, global warming is having an impact. The flow of water is reducing, while at the same time, industry is redirecting the river flow to its own needs, which is to service industry rather than the lakes and rivers. Climate change is probably the greatest threat today on biodiversity. It affects all the other ecosystems. It affects forest ecosystems, marine ecosystems, freshwater ecosystems. The irony of global warming at Niagara Falls is that the falls were one of the pioneering projects that established the modern use of electricity as a domestic power source. The invention of alternating current in the 1880s led to power being distributed over long distances. Since then, nearly three quarters of Niagara's water has been diverted to hydroelectric uses, and there are plans to use even more. Following a massive public letter writing campaign in support of restoring and maintaining Niagara Falls as a place of natural beauty, the Niagara Reservation became New York's first state park in 1885. The move was matched in Canada by the establishment of the Niagara Parks Commission which governs the entire course of the river from Lake Erie to Lake Ontario. But over the course of time, urban development has encroached on this area of remarkable beauty. Still, tourists flock to the area to enjoy what many believe to be one of the most beautiful places on planet Earth. <laughs>